Hello everyone. Welcome to our final session of nonlinear and adaptive control. I'm Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bangalore. I'm very, very thankful uh, to all those who have attended this course. And uh, I really hope I've been able to generate enough interest in the topic of nonlinear adaptive control. Uh, it is a rather rich area. And um, it is, uh, of course, uh, a rather powerful set of tools in nonlinear control, which is what um, makes it one of the most applied areas in nonlinear control uh, for fighter jets like what you see in the background here, and also for spacecraft. These have uh, even been um, tested in actual flight conditions, right? So. Uh, and of course, there are also companies that specialize in adaptive, uh, you know, uh, control for drones. Yeah. So um, a lot of applications. Again, I focus mostly on the aerospace applications or aeromechanical applications because of my own background. But um, there is uh, quite a bit of work out there on electrical, uh, biological, uh, chemical systems also using adaptive control. So what we have been looking. And in this last week is a little bit of what you see uh, in the bottom right of uh, our motivating image in the background, which is on neural networks. So as you can see here in the image, this is like a deep learning network. So essentially a multi-layered neural network. So it's typical practice um, in neural networks to do to have several layers now, uh, because again, we have a lot more computational power and a lot more data available to train these networks. So the typical approach is to uh, have an offline training uh, where you input a lot of training data on the left of this network and you get the output on the right of the network and use this input output in order to tune the weights uh, that appear in this uh, sort of nonlinear function approximator. Right? And uh, then you use these weights in order uh, to do actual experiments. I mean, when you go to the actual run, you design your controllers based on these weights. So this is what uh, we have been looking at. Uh, we of course look are looking at a rather special situation where are uh, there are a couple of things. The weight uh, or the learning itself of the weights is happening online along with the control. And secondly, in order to make sure that this learning plus control mix is uh, stable, we use adaptive control principles. So I hope you have seen by now that. Um, the adaptive control uh, is essentially very, very closely connected to deep learning. And we also saw that um, deep learning is now uh, prevalent also in uh, you know, reinforcement learning and other you know, classification approaches. So uh, over and all, you understand, I hope you understand that uh, these adaptive control, these stable adaptive control methods are of significant use in learning yeah so we are of course looking at a very specific uh, case of this uh, three layer neural network being applied as a function approximator uh, to a, a multi linked robot and because it's like a, a neural network approximator we don't really care uh, to write out these mass inertia functions and the coriolis functions by hand for every single robot if you bring in any robot this is like a plug and play controller so once you uh, you could if you have a control module you can plug it into any multi-linked robot which has this kind of a uh, euler lagrange system structure like you see here uh, in equation 7 uh, and and you know you can start controlling it because your uh, neural network uh, using this adaptive law will automatically learn all these uh, you know nonlinear uh, you know robot function right so this is this is what is the cool aspect right that, that it is agnostic to what kind of m v g f you have this function the neural network function approximator is going to learn it and how the learning happens you know, via the uh, you know uh, adaptive 
update laws is what we saw last time. So we sort of add, added a robustification term. And uh, of course, uh, you know, we, we sort of wrote the dynamics in a rather nice way. Yeah, either in the in form 28 or in the form of, uh, you know, equation uh, 30. So it was either in the form of equation 28 with the disturbance terms W1 or in the form of equation 30 with disturbance terms uh, labeled as W, right? So uh, the first result then that we saw was on back propagation, which was a rather ideal situation where we assume that these disturbances are zero. We saw that uh, it's not very easy to sort of claim W1 is zero. It's obvious if you assume that the second order terms are zero, so your function is a linear function and you don't have these, uh, you know, it's an exact estimator and the disturbance is zero. So these terms will become zero rather easily, but we realize that this term will become zero only if you know you have this kind of a W tilde, V tilde type of a thing going to see. All right. So this is um, uh, a sort of linear in parameter type of assumption on the function. Yeah. If you want these to be zero. And if this does happen, we did have this back propagation based. Um, you know, tuning of weights. So this sort of math, uh, why it's given this name is because this sort of maps uh, with to the uh, sort of uh, weight tuning algorithms that standard nonlinear uh, neural networks use offline. Yeah. So this is the update law. I mean, and if you notice that, uh, I mean, you have to remember that this um, sigma hat was essentially, you know, sigma hat is just defined a sigma of v hat transpose x right so so remember that this is just notation so sigma hat is just v hat transpose x okay so this was a notation that was used right and and so that notation so you can see that w hat dot depends on v hat and v hat dot also depends on w hat okay so they are sort of uh, interdependent here yeah and we also saw how the Lyapunov analysis goes, right? Because of this ideal circumstance where you don't have this W1 and V, we just make them zero here. And you look at this equation. So all you have is, so this term goes to zero because of this Q symmetry, then this term contributes to a nice negative term. And these two terms are of course canceled using the update law. And then you have, of course, this L function, this Lyapunov candidate function L, its derivative is negative semi-definite and then you can use your LaSalle invariance or Parblard lemma signal chasing to prove R goes to zero, right? Excellent. So, so this is sort of where we were. I'm going to mark uh, our final lecture here. Right, starting here. Like I said, you can use Parblard lemma signal chasing or you can use LaSalle invariance to claim that R goes to zero. And once you have R going to zero, you know that you also have error and the derivative of the error, tracking error going to zero. And that's essentially what it is. Okay. So, so few important points. Uh, the first, in the introduction itself, uh, the authors mentioned that most of these neural network based laws require very specific or very good weight initialization. Uh, so that problem is, uh, does not arise at all. Right. In fact, if you see, if you take the initial conditions on the weights w hat v hat to be zero, you see that the right hand side of this guy and this guy becomes zero. So it's an equilibrium. So this entire update goes away. So you will stay at w hat and v hat to be zero for all time. So basically it takes the neural network out of the circuit and has the only has only the outer tracking loop. Right? So so of course um, uh, basically, if you, I mean, you can do some kind of a local stabilization using this KV type term, right? So if you have a large enough KV uh, and if the filtered error is R is small enough, then you're fine, right? So, so anyway, so, so of course, it's not possible to choose such large KV for several practical reasons. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so this is, so this is the connection to the back propagation algorithm. So this is equations 33 and 34 are matched with 37 and 38, which is what is known in uh, neural network theory as the back propagation results, right? Great. Uh, so theorem is when it reveals that, you know, when, uh, when only this uh, back propagation alone will suffice. And this is when this term is exactly equal to zero. Uh, 
and and this is what i was saying that this uh, first term in 29 reveals that it's a rather strong assumption than just sim linearity of fx right so even if epsilon is 0 tau d 0 f is linear this is not guaranteed yeah so uh, and of course fx is of course only linear in the one link arm case so there's a lot of assumptions right a lot of assumptions so this is a uh, i mean so w1 being equal to 0 is a very strong assumption right so uh, so of course then there is you know additional results that are in this article also so that's what is there in theorem 3.2 it reveals the failure of simple back propagation in the general case right um, basically it can be shown the authors themselves uh, i'm not sure if they are showing it themselves right so um, we'll not worry about that right now but the point is it can be shown that the weights become unbounded right i mean all of this is because of the assumption that w1 is equal to zero right w1 is not really zero even for the linear fx case and even the linear case happens only if fx is uh, only the robot is a single link robot right so so this is what the authors say are generally not bounded unless the hidden layer obeys a stringent persistence condition okay great now uh, therefore, there is a need to look at the more general case, right? Um, so, so of course, there is need to modify the tuning weight. There is the need to add a robustifying term. Okay, so both of these are there. So we already added a v. Of course, in the previous result, we assumed that v was exactly zero. Yeah, and we gave a, I mean, set of weight tuning rules. Now, of course, the authors will give a slightly different weight tuning. Okay, great. Uh, so so this is what uh, you know uh, is is going to be detailed in the second theorem right um so of course this uh, i mean the disturbance tau d and the reconstruction error uh, make it impossible to show that l is l dot is non positive for all r so therefore you can only show that it is uh, l dot is negative outside a compact set so this is what is as usual our uh, you know residual set type result you are used to this right because if there is disturbance there is an epsilon error in the function approximator then you are used to the i mean you have to have some kind of a residual set performance only. you cannot have exact convergence so one should not even expect any exact convergence right? so this is the first important thing to remember yeah okay right so see so this is the sort of robustifying term that the authors introduce Right. So this is essentially the robustification term. It contains of the, uh, I mean, honestly, not a smooth term. It's a non-smooth term, if you may. And this term is like a norm of Z hat, obesity norm of Z hat. And then, of course, you have some state dependent terms. And then end with some gain, which is larger than some constant C2. Right. And this constant C2 is known in equation 32. It's, it's coming from the bound on W. Okay. So the idea is sort of to take care of this sort of term, right? So we'll see how that happens. Okay. And then the neural network weight tuning is changed a little bit. If you see, um, the second term is not very different from what we had. Yeah? So you had GX sigma hat prime transpose W hat R transpose. And this is exactly the same. GX sigma hat prime transpose W hat R whole transpose. This is exactly the same but the first term was f sigma hat r transpose in the back propagation term case and here it is modified to include two more terms again there is a non-smooth term here yeah, but it's a nice continuous term but a non-smooth term because it's a norm r type of a term okay and this term is also written in terms of a norm r type of term i think this is not equal to this is what i need to uh let's see let's see just a second please just give me a moment please i think that term is not quite right
I, I believe this is not equal to this is actually a minus term. This is not an equal to, but this is a minus term. Yeah, that's a typo here in the paper. Okay, so that's fine. So this also the v hat dot is also changed, and the w hat dot also changes. So you have the ideal version, and then you have these new terms. Okay, and now uh, how you and and essentially what you can prove is that for large enough kv and the filter tracking er error r. Uh, these become uniform ultimately bounded uh, with practical bounds given specifically by 43 44s right so this is what you sort of obtain right which is what you sort of obtain so so you of course assume these uh, nice approximation properties old which is this uh, uh, you know for the function approximator with some epsilon n in, and and we assume that this also holds not everywhere but in this nice set Okay, this nice set, and again you have, I mean, U R, which is a set which is correspondingly defined for the R variety. Okay, you typically assume that these bounds hold within a certain set. Right. So then, of course, this approximation property holds here. Okay, for this set R in U R zero in U R. Okay. So now, as usual, you do the Lyapunov derivative. So this is the nice term. Then you have this Q symmetry term, which is going to go away. Then this first term is coming just from the derivative of uh, our same L. The L is not changed actually. The L is still the same. So this, right? So this is the term. So the first term here. Uh, so this term is coming from this guy, and then uh, this is coming from your uh, R dot. Right? So this these terms are coming from R dot. So in fact these. Uh, this term and this term is not different from what you had in the previous case, right? Uh, except for, of course, the fact that you've introduced a v, and right? so uh, that sort of also has to show up here. Right? That those terms also show up corresponding to the v here, right? Because you have this kind of a term here. Okay, great. So and then then you have this term which was again same as before. So so the additional terms, if you see, are you had a sigma hat r transpose and this term already right so the additional terms here are so this two terms were already there so the additional term is sort of this thing uh, let's see is this an additional term or this two was already there ah yes this this is an additional term because uh, we are using equation number 30 so we are using this guy yeah so the so this guy results in uh, this term and the v term is coming from uh, this guy. Yeah, so this guy accounts for the first term here. Yeah. So everything else is the same. In fact, my 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 mistake. The v is not even stated right now until now okay so once you do that uh, the authors apply the tuning rule and they do a bunch of simplifications i'm not going into the complete details of this i would ask you to verify the steps here yeah in order to get to this i'll ask you to verify the steps so this nice negative term still remains yeah and then you have uh, these kind of W minus W tilde, V minus V tilde, and R transpose uh, W plus V type of term. So V is still not substituted. Notice, yeah. And then of course there is a, you you do these kind of nice trace equalities, yeah. And then then you bound these trace equalities. And once you do that, you start working with the norms everywhere, with the vector norms and the uh, matrix norms here, and this is where of course you introduce the expression for v also and that expression for v gets substituted here right so again i'm not going into the details i will ask you i'll request you to sort of verify these details these are simply just using standard norm inequalities yeah and then this this particular equality and inequality right here 
um, and after substitution of V, right, you get this kind of a final expression. Okay, this kind of a final expression. Here KV min is of course minimum singular value of KV, right? And the last ceiling quality holds due to 40. So so basically 40 is this guy. All right. So a lot of lot of the earlier inequalities that were mentioned have been used here in order to arrive at these bounds uh, at this nice uh, bound here, right? So now um, if you um, do a nice completion of squares after defining this kind of a uh, you know this kind of a new variable c3 yeah uh, so what is the completion of square the completion of square is uh, you know being done uh, here on this term so this term is this guy and here is what you have here right and 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 you you sort of nicely break it into these pieces uh, and and of course uh, this is where you sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you sort of do a, a standard completion of squares in order to get your uh, residual set bound. Okay, and that's essentially what is being done in these steps. All right, that is essentially what is being done in these sets. So you get two different sets, right? Um, so one set is of course obtained from here, uh, this guy. Yeah that is you know here c3 and this right and then you have another set on r so one set is on the z tilde which is the parameter error and the other set is on the r which is the state errors right and it's um, uh, uh, what you get is that l dot will be negative outside this compact set okay, which is defined by uh, these two inequalities 43 and 44 and therefore you have standard uniform ultimate boundedness uh, for both r and z tilde and because z tilde contains both v tilde and w tilde you have what you need right right so one thing is obvious that any excursion beyond this 43 44 lead to decrease in lyapunov function which means that you will get back into the bound so z and uh, z tilde and r are of course restricted within this residual set right um so uh, so anyway i mean these bounds are of course dictated by you know number of higher order terms in the taylor series and the magnitude of the taylor series bounds etc right um and of course as you know that the first terms are nothing but the back propagation algorithm itself so this is what is the standard back propagation and the last terms look like the epsilon modification so uh, if you look at these terms uh, these are sort of like so these are like the standard back propagation and these terms look like your epsilon modification because this contains a v hat term yeah, and this is basically a w hat term okay so this is like an epsilon modification right and this why it's an epsilon modification instead of a sigma modification because the additional terms are scaled by the state right remember in the sigma modification the w hat and the v hat terms would be scaled by a constant here they're not scaled by a constant they're scaled by the state value itself so why it's better is because if r becomes close to zero you don't stop learning the parameter because in the constant gain case if r goes close to zero uh, these terms are dead these terms if r goes close to zero these terms become zero but this term continues to dominate and push w hat and v hat will continue to dominate and push w hat and v hat towards zero so whatever parameter value that was learned is lost so this is like an epsilon modification because it is also scaled by normal all right so that's the whole idea so this is like an uh, epsilon modification right so as i mentioned we will not look into the you know passivity properties of the neural network uh, right now we want to just quickly look at uh, like a uh, you know design right so so this is like a standard adaptive control for a you know uh, like a two link robot this is what planar two link arm yeah so this is like a standard uh, you know setup for a lot of experiments in adaptive control right um, so then you have the desired and actual joint angles here so you have q1 q1 desired and q2 q2 desired right 
and then you also have you know mass estimates yeah the estimates of course don't converge you see yeah don't look like they converge to true values yeah but what i mean this, this is not what you guarantee in adaptive control anyway okay so uh note the good behavior which obtains since there are only two unknown parameters yeah so that i mean so you have nice persistence type results now if you add some uh, unmodeled dynamics right so some unmodeled terms dynamical terms in the simulation you add and you still implement an adaptive controller not a neural network based controller you start to see significant deterioration in the performance so q1 is like this you can see and q1 desired is this and similarly q2 is this um, you know this guy and the q2 desired is this dotted line yeah so you see that things sort of match for some time but they don't match for a while and so on and so forth and the estimates of course look rather bad the estimates start to look rather bad okay great then uh, you implement like similarly um, uh, you know i mean like a backdrop back propagation based weight tuning right to this kind of a problem right so uh, and you you basically look at this response of a neural network um and and you see that you get a you know, nice better tracking because q1 converges to q1 desired even with this unknown uh, you know unmodeled dynamics and similarly q2 converges to q2 desired um the weights of course don't seem to you know do nice things still right and then of course we add this improved weight tuning uh and and you see that you get of course uh, slightly quicker tracking better tracking performance and uh, you know mass convergence also sort of looks, sort of looks similar right so uh, and and of course we see the controller performance with and without without the neural networks so that 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 of course is not matching at all yeah, as you can see yeah. so this is sort of what the uh, you know so so that's what this is sort of highlighted to study the contribution of the neural network uh, figure 9 shows the response of the controller that is with no neural network and uh, standard results in robotics indicate pd control should be bounded errors if kv is large enough this is observed it is however that the addition of the neural networks has made a significant improvement in the tracking performance all right so this is the idea right i mean uh, so how they sort of illustrated value uh, of this neural network type method is that they started with this nice uh, baseline robotic model and then they uh, you know uh, they added some terms into this uh, you know the system matrices like the m vm and g and f and all that so they added just one term right so uh, so so basically uh, they see that there is a deteriorated performance here you know, if you don't have a neural network type controller then uh, so basically is yes, this is like you know i mean uh, you see the performance here using the back propagation which is the idealized weight tuning also where you assume some disturbance terms are exactly zero while they're not um and then all these quantities are still the same which is this uh, there is an additional term right? and and um, here uh, you you see that uh, you sort of have relatively better results in terms of the tracking performance okay. a weight convergence anyway is not completely guaranteed even here unless there is some kind of a persistence but you do have you know very nice tracking performance okay. and then of course you show improved tracking and quicker tracking by using the uh, you know like a modified weight tuning method okay. and that's what is sort of illustrated here okay. so um in conclusion i really hope that uh, you know you you sort of got a good feel for um how adaptive control is very closely connected to deep learning and uh, the only difference here in adaptive control is that we look to prove stability which uh, and therefore analytically especially and which may make uh you know designing all sorts of arbitrary tuning laws difficult right but that's essentially what we do in adaptive control also we design tuning laws and we prove uh stability with that and in this case stability would mean some kind of good function function approximation and therefore good tracking yeah so uh, the other thing is uh, because we were doing this adaptive control uh, based learning we also were doing everything online 
Yeah. Of course, you can use the same laws and do things offline also because we saw that this back propagation is essentially the you know base tuning that we did in adaptive control law. Uh, with an adaptive control law is same as what we have for the standard case. Yeah. Uh, you know, like like uh, your offline learning type of situation. All right. So we are sort of at the uh, back end of our course and. Uh, I really hope that this last week did give you uh, a very good idea of how relevant adaptive control is even today uh, in the sense that it has very, very close ties to deep learning and hence to other forms of learning, like reinforcement learning and uh, classification problems, which are still uh, connected to some kind of uh, parameter estimation and parameter learning. Um, I really hope all of you enjoyed the course as much as I enjoyed delivering it. And I am, of course, always open for feedback, uh, comments, applications, uh, cool new results, uh, cool, cool new experiments. Yeah. So uh, I hope you'll stay in touch through this course and uh, learn more about the avenues that uh, nonlinear adaptive control affords us. Thank you, and um, I'm very glad for all of you, uh, for all of your learning and the fact that all of you listened to what I had to say for these studies. Thanks. Again.